What's good YouTube and welcome to the house. Over the past year, I paid a lot more attention to the OCG market, and right now, collectibles over there are skyrocketing. They are shooting up in price at a crazy range for different ones that really seem out of nowhere at first glance, but have been trending for a while. So I want to go into a couple of what those are and how I came across those. First off, I do have a $20 tier on the Patreon that mails OCG cards to people each month that we're missing here. From ultimate rares, which are by far the most demanded thing, like from core sets that we aren't going to get or haven't got and then also classic arts which the lost art promotion may or may not cover in the future to like extended arts which are older cards over there so i stopped pushing that so much because when the crush card hit i was like i'm not gonna keep pressing this i still want to get into mailing to every single state but we're gonna back off of that for now but i kept my ear to the ground i kept ordering cards because a lot of you guys stayed on the patreon and one thing i ordered in mass for prize for YouTube and Twitch were these bad boys and this is a 20th anniversary set you may notice a card peeking out there being obelisk which has a 20th anniversary promo obelisk a playmat and why I bought these was for a super unique collectible that I I promise I'll get out of here one comes in a 20th anniversary little package that is unassuming and it has a medallion and cut into 3d steel is obelisk the tormentor and on the back is 20th anniversary Yu-Gi-Oh with star studs all around it I really think it's an amazing piece of art and I was like this is a unique collectible. The playmat doubles is another giveaway thing. And a promo, who cares about the promos? I would pull them out, set them aside, not really care about them. And guess what? Spiked in price to huge proportions. You can still get the medallion somewhat cheap, but listers are running out. The playmat is somewhat cheap here. And I thought the medallion was going to be what goes up. And after that one seller, it sure does. But holy heck for a 3,000 yen product that is under 30 US dollars this promo has hit the stratosphere so what happened with its price history after a bit it started to go to 50 to 60 for the card and that's weird and it turns out they were making another kit for slifer which has gone way beyond slifer seems to be the ocg's favorite god card it was also yugi's card so it makes a lot of sense and you note that both of these are more the movie pack art so they're not the tra traditional god card arts and i know i'm getting excited i kind of start to stumble when i get excited this is a topic that i truly get into and i sold my slifers i was not able to get as many kits because guess what this was shorted it was actually half the print run as i understand it as it should to be and when it comes down to that i was only able to get two of these kits and i sold my promos at 200 dollars and thought i was eating good now this is going for 500 some odd and as these came out these started to leave the market more but hung around 80 dollars for a long time then just psh, skyrocketed and i think they're around 180 to 200 in japan right now but the lowest on the u.s market because ocg go goods are typically a little bit hard to import they're around 250 now the winged dragon of raw for this set was a jump ish promo where you could order this pack and it would be guaranteed in it so that i know guaranteed promos that already went up but it's way more in mass so as people got that one they're like okay time to complete the set turned around and they were going going gone which rarely happens in ocg land this is not a common occurrence and both of these retailed at three thousand yen just under thirty dollars that's why we can take lessons from the ocg and apply them to the tcg in my mind well this is not a one for one comparison wing dragon of raw is one per case whereas there were tons of these obelisk mats i have a friend who's very versed in the ocg who thought obelisk couldn't go any higher than like 80 or would barely budge or move and now it's going towards triple that price of 80 dollars this is something that I think is moving slower because TCG Ghost Rare scratch pretty darn easy and we have factory out the pack scratching and when we look at these prices well you probably want to see one of these bad boys in person when you're spending that kind of money and you want it to look nice and clean you might even want to get it graded and it carries the name of a god card I don't think it's a question of if 
But when will Konami follow through and make an obelisk and a Slifer Ghost Rare for the TCG? Why would they leave the Winged Dragon of Raw all out on its own to dry? I think they will complete the set at some point, having brought back Ghost Rares in this huge, grandiose, the God cards are coming back as Ghost Rares. So I think people are questioning, how long will my money be tied to this? When will the other products? Will it be year by year? Think of the moment that announcement is made. Where's the market going to go for these? It is going to be going, going, gone. And I think also the sealed product for this will go up over time as people chase this out of one per case on average. It's missing out. Like, every 10 cases, there's one case that seems to be missing one of these. And I've also seen people pull two of these out of a single case, so that's interesting. But we can take that lesson from the OCG market and apply it to ours and look to our future. And like I said, it's not a one-for-one -one comparison, but something eyebrow-raising, Ghost Rares didn't used to do that hot in the OCG. Kind of like Ultimate Rares. Ghost Rare Dark Magician Girl, I think, was an easy call because when you had the uh, World Championship promo pack, one go to $3,000 and you saw another Ghost Dark Magician Girl release, it stayed around 80 to 100 for a while. It's, it was even at 120, then dipped back down, and now is on a rocket as well. I think it goes for around 200 ish dollars over in the OCG right now, and the lowest on our market is 300 and people are eating them up. Similarly, uh, for side set Ghost Rares for them blue eyes alternative sat around 40 to 50 for a very long time it's around 120 over there you see jim mint here is also at 120 before it goes up so that's interesting isn't it we have multiple high-end things that are starting to spike and this used to never happen in the ocg when the structure decks came out for the sacred beast these were around 15 dollars for them and they spiked to 80 now ours in the tcg spiked proportionally way higher but seeing that now there's this buyout culture starting in the OCG that it is starting to catch on over there. Be it something they wouldn't do before or something that we haven't even had a chance to think about here. We are starting to witness that happen time and time again with different products. Either old cards starting to spike that already were doing decent or a new release causing the spike on its own. And these are all like mild plays, but I think they're, they're around 80 to 120 over there for Nearish Mint, but they're just getting ex exasperatingly harder to find if that's a word exasperatingly maybe anyways the world championship promos also gave us a view into the fact that the ocg is willing to play its hand in the international market towards the tcg as they bought out recently a ton of our world championship promos this had around 400 dollars for a sealed envelope forever and then i had a personal friend hitting me up recently john i think i'm gonna buy the last of these at 900 do you think it's a good buy and i'm like wow where did they go and then he bought the last ones and was able to sell them for 1200 directly to the japanese contacts that he had and they seem to be eating these off of the market right now for what has monster reborn and red eyes only in it the 2018s also spiked even double past their original spike with blue eyes and dark magician also being eaten partly by them and then other vendors trying to get these in and slurp them on up off the market because they see that they're going elsewhere and won't be returning to our market. They have other collectibles that have been made somewhat recently that are doing very well as uh, we speak. Rise of the Duelist had something that was akin to a first edition with a box topper that was a special pack that I think had 19 different cards in it. So one out of every 19 boxes, I think in theory should have this if I'm correct, I may be mistranslating that, but this is like a status symbol, kind of like 10,000 Dragon. Who's using this? But the OCG ones, they're 2,000, making our $1,400 ones look kind of squeamish. And since it was so much over there, when ours dipped on original release towards 900, guess who it is that put out a buy list to cause that initial buyout to spike back towards 1,400 before it started to cool down? It was the Japanese. No joke. They have theirs over towards 2,000 at their place. And they're like, yo, half price, 10,000 dragons just for having the English name. Looks the same. Deal. And they bought a ton of ours. So we see the hand not only going up towards theirs, but now looking 
elsewhere to spend their money looking around towards even our market for our english copies now i actually don't know oh the stainless steel set this is kind of funny this came out in an anniversary box and you either i think got the blue eyes or dark magician i do not believe you got both but i haven't seen an opening of that product the blue eyes used to go for 50 and now we see it lowest on ebay towards 200 and the dark magician used to go i want to say around 20 and is going up towards 50 slash 70 but the, just all these different collectibles that i've been looking around that i've ordered myself some not to flex but i wanted a piece of Yu-Gi-Oh history that seemed cool for something we didn't have and were unlikely to get over here we see these things happening on crazy products that were so cheap to begin with and they're going and breaking the limits of what we know of the ocg market of the past and again it teaches us lessons for the future so what do you guys think is it maybe a comparison to look at this versus this or is it totally different scenarios one per case versus tons of these released and floated the market for a while at 30 dollars. you could have grabbed this for a long time like it's watching history with one of the most popular temi cards in terms of the god cards of what gets bought off of amazon what gets commonly consumed and its highest rarity form for the tcg i think you should be stocking up personally but it's a big price card of course if you're using my tcg player link in the description down below costing you nothing extra to support the channel directly for the cards you'd already be buying i appreciate it but whenever making big money moves don't just listen to market man make your own informed opinions look around you look at what's developing and then decide especially with ordering online where you could get scratches there's customer service but like you will have to deal with that on such high cards and put all that energy be careful what you are going after but take less Lessons. take lessons definitely from a comparable market in senses and think about the future of our market